Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Jesse Haugen. I'm a composer who occasionally makes YouTube videos, doesn't make them as often as I like, but hey, I'm here, you're here, so let's enjoy this together. Today, I'm going to be uh, diving into a cinematic game trailer I scored for a studio called No One Studio. They have an amazing YouTube channel. You should absolutely check them out. I have linked that below. And the game that the trailer is for is a game called Puzzle Royale, and no One Studio just did an incredible job making a very immersive, cinematic, honestly, like, stunning trailer. And so it was a real honor of mine to create the music for this. And so what I thought would be fun is to go through this. And I haven't looked at this in years. I did this years ago. And they're so kind to allow me to actually show this. So often the things I work on I can't actually show on YouTube. So I don't often get to do, like walk through how I scored something videos, but that's like my favorite type of video to make. And so I'm really glad that they're letting me do that here. They, they actually gave me permission years ago, but I'm just lazy, but I'm here. Like I said, I'm here, you're here. We're going to do it. So, um, we're going to go through and we're just going to watch it and we're going to see sort of where, what I was thinking, where I might think hit points would be and then we'll go back and we'll actually see how I scored it similar to the structure of that indie film music contest video that I posted years ago that you guys love so much so here's another one sort of in that um, that style so yeah let's jump right on in so as you can see it's set in sort of like an ancient maybe medieval village I'm not quite sure and this one starts right off with a bang so right from the beginning we get action and it starts like this Boom, we have this epic fantasy portal, character comes out, jumps down, another character jumps down, and wow, we're like immediately into the action. It's a chase scene, we're like, we're right after it, right away. And I knew that because that's how this was sort of playing out, um, I wanted the music right from the very beginning to just immerse us in the action. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna start with like little string swells and ease us into the act. No, it's we're starting immediately right on it. So I knew we needed a really strong opening and I wanted to really call attention to things like the portal and the characters coming out. And so um, as we go through this, I'll, I'll call out some more of those hit points. But yeah, that's sort of where my mind was as as we started. So it starts, boom, we have a really big hit that feels like a moment to me. And then we get this like horrifying scream, like really epic really scary image so I knew this was a moment and then we get something completely unexpected and we get the introduction of this new character this female character and just the way she's dressed and her like aesthetic everything is like so different from what we've seen up to this point so I knew that I wanted the music not to just feel like it's coming out of left field but I wanted it to take us somewhere more like fantastical, a little bit more like light fantasy. Thomas, the director, and I talked a lot about, you know, try to ride that line between like epic fantasy and sort of more light fantasy. And I think this gives us an opportunity to really bring some of that in because it starts off so dark and heavy otherwise. And plus, it's, I mean, it's just like compared to the shot we just saw, like it's such a contrast, you know, this like horrifying creature and then this really delicate, like, kind-looking character um, who's human. It's the first human we've seen. It, it just it gives an opportunity for juxtaposition. So, And she obviously seems completely unfazed. And then she just is clearly very powerful. And the first time I saw this shot, this was, like, to me, there are occasionally when I'm scoring something, I'll see shots that's like, oh, I cannot wait to score that. This was one of those moments. Like, I was so excited when they cut to this wide. Like, even when it was just the animatic. Because when I was scoring this, I wasn't seeing it beautiful like this. You get the advantage of seeing it really pretty. But I knew what it could look like when it was done. And they absolutely delivered. But it's just, I mean, what like a stunning image. Like this huge creature being held like in the air by this smaller human. It's just so cool. And so I knew I wanted to like really have this be like a swelly, frilly kind of moment. And then, yeah, completely disintegrate. I mean, brutal. She's she's a she's a killer. Um, and then when we get here, this is where the the director Thomas's direction really helped because when I first watched this, I wasn't entirely sure, like what the tone should be through here. And he sort of told me like, as we as we continue to watch, we'll see another portal opens, 
and then more characters come out and they're like them but from different dimensions and so he told me he wanted this like inquisitive sort of like what's going on here type of music so you know obviously we just had a sort of victory so there's some of that involved but we're getting introduced to the world and the world is not quite as it seems even for the characters involved not just for us as viewers and so trying to think of how I could do music that's sort of like okay what's like what's going on here can we figure out what's going on both from our perspective but also from the character's perspective so that sort of continues through here they're all sort of looking around comparing to one another and then we get this moment where they like you know kind of a call to action they look at each other and they're like yeah let's do this and so that was the moment where it's like okay now we get like the big theme the they're committed to whatever adventure awaits them and so that's where i wanted to really have like a big sort of adventure theme here so we we come out of the like what's going on here music into a very confident um theme and and that continues and carries us through and then we have whoom, portal goes away and then we get the big game logo and so i knew that there was sort of like two endings to this there was the the ending where the portal goes away but then there's also we needed something to tag the logo we talked we went back and forth a lot on like should we not have music there should we have music there i didn't like the idea of having the music just carry through to that because it the portal going away feels like an end and it felt weird to have music just carry over a blank wall so uh, you'll see what i did but there's definitely almost like two sort of endings to this so yeah speaking of what i did let's jump into what i did so i'm gonna keep this video sort of small so you can kind of keep a keep an eye on what's going on here but this is my cubase session again this is from years let's see what is this from this is from january uh, 13th 2022 so yeah this is over two years ago now two years and two months ago is when I did this um, and as we start here I'm not showing the final mix or the final recording this is all my samples so we'll sort of like dissect it and look into it um, with my with my sample mock-up so you can see how I did that and then at the end I'll show you the actual mix and we'll see yeah how we how we got where we got so here's here's what I did at the beginning remember the beginning I wanted it to be big I wanted it to be an introduction immediately into the action and here was how I did that <laughs> okay so a couple things here it's it's there's sort of like a sort of in the same way I said there's a, a couple different endings there's sort of also a couple different intros to this as well because I knew that I really wanted the like um, the pattern or the ostinato or whatever I was gonna do to start when when the character actually hits the ground so what we get is this really kind of dramatic flurry introduction right away so, you know, we get a hit on the portal and then we get a hit on the character and, then on the ground. and I was really I still am honestly incredibly proud of this sort of tense, super tense introduction. And it sort of started, um, I remember, at sort of like this big built up diminished chord in the brass that sounds like this. Yeah, so, you know, if you look at, if you look at that, it's just sort of like growing. Kind of a big diminished chord thing, um, nice and, and clustery, and it's sort of like, instruments come in one by one we get a little melody in the trumpets and then the strings i really love they they sort of have this like aggressive da -da 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 and then they do these little blue 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 flourishes this is all with cinematic studio strings i use key switches a lot um, especially when i know i'm going to be orchestrating for real orchestra later because it just makes it so much easier with the midi but here's what those strings sound like <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, just, at, like, energy, action. The brass are bringing, like, the real harmonic content, and then the strings are just bringing, like, movement and energy. Um, and then we have, yeah, some, like, just some sustained choir stuff, which is, you know, more or less boring. Um, we have some percussion. What did I have percussion do here? Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. So, like, flurally harps and suspended cymbals and and things like that oh and then we get some 
woodwinds, some woodwind runs here um, as well to sort of help that landing of the portal. Yeah. And then I really like, and I love how this came. I can't wait for you to hear the, the live part of this, but this with these little string trills, um, just this little moment here. Ba -da 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 -da. It's just such a, like, it's an inquisitive, like, what? I don't know, it already starts to sort of ask a question, and it, it's just flourishy and fun. And then we're into the meat and potatoes of the opening idea. And this opening idea was, again, sort of foundationally built on brass chords um, that, that, that go like this. <laughs> big hit obviously on that hit but let's just see how I built this up so we have those brass chords strings go back again same as the beginning they're providing the movement you know we already have the harmonic content and the thick chords from the brass let's just have the strings bring, bring like the hair and the grit and then this is the worst part of the mock-up but these woodwinds are just doing like runs and stuff You know, and when you get that with a live orchestra, it's like you almost can't actually hear those indistinct notes. It's just like flourishes and energy and it, it all becomes a blur, but like in the best way. And, and I knew that. And that, so that's sort of why I mocked it up that way. Um, and then, yeah, we just, you know, we have some driving percussion, but that whole section all together sort of sounds like this. <laughs> really scary moment so yeah I mean a lot of this is just sort of like you can sort of hear what's going on here but we have we have a big sort of forte piano hit here. And, then a delicate and again we're kind of you know we're building up tension with brass I did that a lot in this score you know and I I use some did I use, yeah I did I used some cluster samples you know, which always provide an interesting challenge when when you go to notate, and I'll show you that as well. But I, I just I wanted to communicate to the director in my mock-up sort of what the general feeling would be here, and it would it would be incredibly discordant to to go with that scream that happens. Um, and then now we're going to get that contrast. So this is where I said I wanted the music to really change and introduce some of that more light fantasy. So now we get our little strings that sort of like ease us in. Harmonic strings. Stop it there. So this is where we introduce our theme for the first time. I think the first instrument that plays the theme is an oboe. Yeah, right here. Yeah, super simple. Da, 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 da. But if you listen, like, um, let me let me solo all the instruments that either play the exact theme or like a variation on it. It's just a ton of call and response, which is so fun to do when you have an orchestra. Like, oboe plays it, flute one and two play it, um, cellos play it, violins play it. This is what all the melodies sort of just layered on top of each other sound like. <laughs> So yeah, and, and it's just, you you add a little bit of an accompaniment figure in the background, which I think I did in violin twos, violas, and clarinets, and it sounds like this. And, and all of a sudden you have something that sounds like a lot more complex than it actually is. It's just a bunch of individual melodic lines sort of echoing one another with uh, some slight chordal accompaniment. And then, yeah, this is building to that really big shot that I was talking about at the beginning. But again, another key component of this is this heart part sort of giving us a harmonic foundation and, and movement. A great Arpeggios are such a great way to like not bring a bunch of competing or clashing melodic ideas, but to give a sense of movement, even though it's just hitting chord tones. Here's what I did in the harp.
You know, it's almost like Austin Oz. And I think I double that in Celeste too when that part comes. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just little little colors and things. And like, I don't hear all these things in my head when I'm writing. I sort of just like start layering stuff and then it somehow turns into a thing. Like I discover it almost more than I design it, um, which is really common in my compositional practice and sort of the way that I... I often build things like I think when I was writing this, I probably just started with something like this heart part because it just had like a vibe and then came up with a melody that goes on top and then just started echoing the melody a bunch of different places. And then I knew we were building up to this big shot that I had talked about before. And so at some point we needed to start building um, some some breath again into this. And so I brought brass back in and that leads us in this way. And um, the way that that sort of sounds with everything is like this. And if I if I isolate strings, you can sort of hear I'm just I'm doing that same theme again. Da, 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 da. And it starts in cellos. I did all these trills here in the strings too, which is really fun, especially when you have a whole orchestra of it. You know, it's really, it's really dense. Like th there's a lot, if we look at them, yeah, as you can see, it's like basically every note in the whole B flat major scale, um, or actually it would be an F major scale because there's an E in there, from B flat to B flat, all just trilled together. And it just makes this like fluttery, expressive, again, it sounded so cool with the live orchestra as you'll see in the end. Um, yeah, it's, it's a character. It's like the notes almost don't matter as much as the feeling of what the trill technique brings to the, to the actual emotion of the score. And then I had some woodwinds just like double the melody at some point. Um, and then we get to this moment where, where things sort of like, you know, it's a sort of a small victory moment. And this is where I sort of introduced like that adventure sort of idea. And now I didn't like, it's not a new theme. It's more just like an ostinato and, and that sort of goes like this. <laughs> Okay, and now then we get to the confusing part. But yeah, let's just break down this little thing for a little bit. So this is sort of the just the backbone of that adventure ostinato. You know, nothing crazy. But it's the first time we get triplets, which always have sort of like a jovial adventure adventure feel to me. I think I also doubled that in some of these woodwinds, like the bassoons and the and the clarinet. Yeah. Which, like, and you think about how to write for orchestra, it's like, it's not that crazy. Like, you just, just double stuff. Just come up with something in strings and double it in places in, in the woodwinds, and, like, it'll sound like orchestra. Um, but, I, but it also, like, this isn't a full arrival, full statement of that theme yet, so I have these sort of sustainy woodwinds um, and, and some choir that sort of, like, introduce, like, what's going to happen. that sort of land on this reveal here um this is one of my favorite it's uh um venus women's and they have um which is uh sound iron i believe and they have these like phrases i mean just listen to how cool these phrases are and it's it's blurry but like in context it just it almost makes it feel more real Again, it's just movement, it's simple movement that doesn't create clutter but gives like life. Um, and then we get to that part that where the director Thomas wanted things to sort of feel like, okay, what's going on here? So we have the very confident, jovial bum ba bum ba bum ba 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 ba, and then we go back into like confusion land. And so I leaned back more in on those textures with like the Celeste and harp that I did when we first are introduced to the female character. And so this sounds like that. <laughs> This is really foundational with the Celeste and the harp. You 
know, that sort of a thing. Still keeping with some of that triplet feel, we get more statements of that theme and it's fleshed out a little bit more in oboe here. So instead of just ba da da da, now we have ba da 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 da, which sort of becomes more of where the um, theme ends up going. So yeah, if we hear all the melodies, it's a lot of call and response. It sounds like this. Flute, oboe, violin, and then clarinet. Again, just like almost all playing the same thing. And like I get a little bit clever figuring out how it fits into the chords and stuff, but like you just want to sound like you want to make orchestral music. It's just like a bunch of different instruments echoing each other. It just creates this sense of like color and space and I'm not making this long complex melody it's like simple motifs that I'm developing a little bit and then I'm just doing lots of call and responses and at the same time we start building back into that adventure thing as they sort of like accept the reality of their situation and I have that in woodwinds and then like pizzicato strings and that that sort of sounds like this that sort of builds us and then there's this moment where they like start to accept and like actually confidently sort of pursue their adventure and that's when we go back to the full statement of that dun 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 which is the adventure theme and we get our um theme our main theme da -da, ba -da -da. we get that over that adventure melody so this is where they all sort of come together and that sounds like this <laughs> Yeah, so that's sort of like where this where this um, climax went. And let's isolate this down a little bit. So here's what strings are doing. We have um, melody is all over this. Uh, we have, let's sort of break it down maybe by section. That's a little bit easier. So we have string staccatos all sort of doing this, this um, adventure ostinato here. That's like this. Oh, I forgot that I did that. So it goes from triplet to duple, which just makes it feel like, man, we're cooking now. It's like, it's a little bit less light and bouncy and a little bit more down to biz. I totally forgot that I did that. That's really cool. Um, I'm an idiot saying my own stuff is cool, but I, there, there I am. So yeah, in the woodwinds and the flutes, um, we, ha we have that little scene. <laughs> And then, like, basically the rest of the woodwinds are all on melody. Um, it's the first time I introduced piccolo as well, um, as well as the first violins are on melody. Um, we've got lots of layers of that in the mock-up. That sounds like this. Oh, and trumpets are on melody. Here we go. Yeah, and there you go. And then I forgot, I actually didn't do an ending on that portal. I did an ending on the... And then just a little statement, a little echo statement with the solo piccolo, which I'm so happy with how that came out too, um, on the Puzzle Royale logo. So we did a big cut to black and then um, a little statement on the, on the name so you can actually draw attention to the name. But the rest of this, it's basically just that ostinato and melody. And then we have some supporting characters like brass are, are doing some like supporting chords and stuff. Yep, that sort of thing. Um, percussion, we have like a lot of stuff going on here with like some like snares and timpani and um harp harp glisten yeah and you know i'm like combining like some manually done harp harp glisses and then some pre-recorded ones you know 
it doesn't sound great when you isolate it, but in context, it. it <laughs> So yeah, that's that's sort of how I executed on the idea. Now the really fun thing about this was I knew that it was going to be recorded live, um, and so I'd made a lot of my decisions sort of with that in mind. And I want to show you, I'll show you the final mix and how everything came all together. But first, I just want to show you the isolated um, stems I recorded with the Budapest Scoring Orchestra, which I use all the time. They're absolutely incredible. Um, and we just did a remote session super early in the morning and uh, got absolutely outrageous results. Um, and this is just their dry mix, like sent back, not even mix. Like this is all the microphones that they record with. Um, it has a bunch of close mics, and then it has some room mics. This is no mixing at all, just the stuff we recorded in the room. So it's not going to have percussion. It's not going to have choir, but it is going to have... Um, we did strings, brass, and woodwinds. And so unmixed, this is just raw, my comp from that Pro Tool session, what this sounds like. And just already, you're going to be like, holy crap. So uh, hopefully you have the mock-up kind of in your mind, but here's, here's what that sounds like. <laughs> So that's what we're working with. And so then when we go to mix, and I had um, Michael Bowska mix this. He's absolutely incredible. Um, uh, we used all sample percussion, like sample choir, but then everything else. I might have layered a couple brass chords, but like everything else is completely live. And this is the mix that he did, and it is just absolutely mind-blowing what the real orchestra brings. So this is the, the final product that I delivered to no one. I didn't deliver it to no one. I delivered it to the studio, which is called No One. So, yeah, in case that didn't make sense. Here's the final mix. So yeah, as you can see, obviously that's incredibly cool, but like, I hope that you got even from the mock-up like that. It's not that it's totally different. It's just another level up of like expression and color and, and life and humanity. But, but it, you know, all the ideas are, are there in this MIDI and I spent a, you know, a good amount of time and a lot of effort to get this to sound as incredible as possible to pitch that to 
um, to the director Thomas so that we could find something we like and then justify the recording time with the studio. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was interesting. If it was and you want me to do more videos like this, let me know. Again, I cannot share on YouTube so many of the things that I work on because I can't like show the video and stuff. So anytime I can, I promise you that I will put it on the list like I did with this one and hopefully it doesn't take me two years to do it. Um, but I will do it. And yeah, it's, it's fun for me to go back to this even so much you know, further in the future and be reminded what I did. It's, it's really cool. So please like the video. If you liked it, leave a comment down below. Um, tell me what you thought was cool or helpful or what you'd like to see next time. Um, subscribe to my channel. I promise I do make more than like three videos a year. Maybe I can't make that promise. I'll try. Um, but this is the first one of 2024. So I'm really excited about that. Um, finally had a break in my composing schedule today to actually knock this out also if you are a composer and you're looking for a community of people also trying to become as good as they can as composing i have a link down below which is to my discord community totally free to join um, just jump in there share your work and and become a part of that community it's a really special place so anyway hope to see you there and i will see you in the next one bye